Today, Precarious plays Phantom Brave. Have you ever had one of those days where like your hair is too long and you have a hole in your favorite shirt and you want coffee but all they have is tea? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not this guy. You never drink coffee. Oh. Well, so you didn't have a beverage disappointment? Because I often have beverage disappointments. It's gotten to the point in my life, youngster, where I really <laughs> just drink one thing in the mornings. And that's calves blood. And that's green alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Paint thinner. No. Water. I just, I mean, juice has always sort of given me the, given me the squirrels early in the morning. The squirrelies. Yeah. Um, I actually guess I have milk with cereal. Milk and cereal. Yeah, so that's something that I, I have. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh. So... I... I'm still stunned at how quickly you can cut through these maps. Don't jinx. <laughs> <laughs> what were we doing last? Now, why was he so... Oh. Oh, it's because he was holding a skull. That's yeah. really interesting. This game is so weird. Okay. Yeah. I like everybody's, um, you know, loose femurs that they're wielding. What does the game call it? I think it's probably just a bone. Um, okay. Bone. Bone. Yeah. Every Let's time. Every time we start to play this game, I am once again charmed by its nonsense. Let's go. I don't know. It's mostly worn off me. Yeah, like your your want for beverages other than water. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, Phantom Brave is not the water of gaming. <laughs> what is? What is the water? Uh, for, for me? Yeah. Probably Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, the water of gaming for me would just be handhelds. Just... Anything that is on a handheld? Right. Because it's the thing where... Well, okay, there was a time in my life where I was very ill... Mm-hmm. And the thing for a, a stretch there that was getting me out of bed every day, mm -hmm. like up and about, was moving to a 3DS to play Animal Crossing New Leaf. And then eventually you'd be like, oh, right, living. That's what we're doing today. Right, but there was a lot of time invested first in that virtual space, mm -hmm. and then I could, yeah, I would wake up to to uh, a real world. Um, the this would probably be like a a mango passion fruit smoothie that for some reason has chocolate chips in it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where does this exist? Or like peanut butter and guava beverage, which no one should make. Don't make it. I think that <laughs> I think that it it would be more like like a weird childhood favorite. No, you know what this would be for me? What? Superman ice cream. Superman ice cream? Yeah. Superman because ice cream is super good. I couldn't really tell you. I only had it a couple of times in my childhood. But I remember liking it, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it has merit. You see, I yeah. picked. I yeah. I chose well. Oh, I see. <laughs> Wasn't just guessing. All I remember saying word. truly about Superman ice cream is that it had different colors. I remember getting it one time and being d disappointed in it. Ah. Well, to continue the metaphor, if Phantom Brave were Superman ice cream, mm -hmm. the Disgaea series would be Neapolitan. Mm. Which is something that I've had much more of, and I have a greater, like, understanding of its place in the world. Mm -hmm. 
I like this video games as ice cream thing. What I was gonna say is that, um, I've been playing Doom 2016. Oh, jeez, yeah. Which I think is just a great compliment to this title. They share a lot in common, actually. Extra dimensional threat, check. <laughs> Absolutely vicious protagonist, check. <laughs> Lots of blood and gore and... There's something about Doom that gives me, like, motion sickness. The old Doom especially, yeah, but even we this gonna, one too. We were going to play, I wanted to play Doom, the original Doom, um, on the show. I think I've mentioned it before. You just got, you got really sick yeah. just from trying it. I, I don't, I don't often get nauseous and I, I have a pretty solid constitution for the most part, except for my respiratory system kind of sucks. But other than that, I'm usually like pretty, pretty tough. Like, yeah, roller coasters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just the premiere, the ultimate in endurance test and, and physical acumen. I don't get sick on the plane. Okay. I've been on boats. I got you know. You've been on boats. Yeah. And you are still here to tell the tale? Yes, I'm impressive. Anyways, the... <laughs> the <laughs> be impressed. <laughs> be impressed. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Anyway, um, it is not usual for me to get motion sickness. And yet, I sat down and was completely surprised. I was like, I feel like garbage. <laughs> Let's stop. <laughs> wow. I think that I just ate a three-day-old seafood. Yeah, a three <laughs> a garbage. It feels like I ate a garbage, and now I have food poisoning. But then I, like, stopped, and I was like, oh, my God. I was just motion sick. That's what just happened. What a weird little story. The sign that can no longer be red is providing invincibility to this fish. Mm. <laughs> okay. You know who deserves it the most? Let's Greg. Go. Greg is now an invish... invish He's invi infishable, yeah. <laughs> Invincible fish. Mm. One thing that I think is very curious Unless I am mistaken, unless I am misremembering how it works, mm -hmm. KO'd phantoms, mm -hmm. their remove timer is paused, and that feels like that kind of fringe knowledge, that edge case, yeah. that like an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh would hang on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait. But there's this tiny part of the rules that we're gonna expand over the next 28 minutes. <laughs> it's like, well now, if I have my golem attack your moon. Bomb. No, I think that might've been the other way around. Somebody attacked a moon directly. And I don't know, there's some, I do have a, a bit of a fascination with the Yu-Gi-Oh anime. <laughs> yeah. Because part of me feels like you know what it, it kind of feels like? It, it feels like if someone were playing like Magic the Gathering. Yeah. But they were just... It's like a bunch of tabletop role players sat down and decided to play a card game and use the cards as a basis for... For the role play. Right. And like the storytelling part of it. Yeah, because... You know, and actually, the Pokemon anime felt a little bit like that, too, mm -hmm. because there were weird, bizarre, very specific scenarios which make, like, dramatic sense and make enough sense that it's like, oh, okay, I see where they're where they're coming from. Like, I think at one point, I think that there was, like, a Steelix, and one of the protagonists is fighting it with a fire Pokemon. I don't want to assume it was Ash and Charizard, but maybe it was Ash, Ash and Charizard. Mm-hmm. I think that there was a there was a, a sandstorm in play, and it was a spiraling dust devil. Mm -hmm. The fire Pokemon turned it into a big pillar of glass by 
flamethrowing or fire blasting. Cool. If I'm remembering correctly. And if not, that's still like an example of the kind of stuff that they get up to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I think that there was a tense moment where a magmar maybe like body slams Charizard into a, a volcano and Ash is like, I don't know if Charizards can go in volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> and this, there's like a beat where, where everybody has to think, did Charizard just die? <laughs> Lava and magma, it's right on that edge case of, is it fire or is it rock? Because Charizard is four times weak to one of those. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> that could be a real problem. 